I almost survived no nut November. That was until I saw my dead grandmother. Every year I've tried and every year I've failed. I'd usually only get a few hours into November before I couldn't resist the urge anymore. I knew it was wrong, I was definitely addicted, and so I wanted to make a change. This year I was determined not to fail, but I can confidently say it's not my fault I failed this time. I've been in a bit of a health freak stage for the majority of this last year. At the start of the year I got extremely lazy and gained a lot of pounds, so decided I'd try and get my life together over the last six months. I started cooking myself meals, got a gym membership, and generally tried to be more responsible with everything. At some point I fell down the TikTok rabbit hole of health influencers, and this eventually led me to the sperm retention community. To a lot of people, No Nut November is just a silly meme, but for me I wanted to prove to myself that I could commit to a cause and actually see it through. Over the last few years I would go hiking a lot with my grandma Lilith before she died. We'd take an easy path for her poor legs, but she always loved hiking so I'd make sure to go with her. I really loved her a lot, and she always got extremely personal with me. But when she passed away I stopped going on the hikes around the same time I started putting on a lot of weight. So I decided this year to avoid any temptations during November. I was going to go on that same trail and spend a few days camping and hiking, just trying to connect with nature. My grandmother always told me if I ever missed her to go on the same trail we always used to walk together. I just never could have guessed the horrifying reason why she told me to do this. It was just past 7 a.m. when I began my hike. I packed light, carrying only my backpack with me which had some water, a few snacks and emergency gear, as well as my tent and all necessary supplies. I passed several other hikers on my way out, but once I hit the trail I was pretty much alone. Birds chirped happily around me, and the smell of nature infused my nostrils with every step further from civilization. But I was still familiar with the area since I'd walked it with my grandmother lots of times before. I remember she'd always tell me stories about her childhood and how they would always play in these woods. I always thought some of the stuff she told me was a bit too in-depth and personal such as her sex life when she was younger. But she was just an old lady so I assumed she wanted to get stuff off her chest. I loved her so I'd listen. I took a moment to catch my breath but as I was sitting down saw something further in the woods. On one of the trees I saw what I can only determine looked like an odd aberration in the trunk. As I got closer to it, I realized it was actually a carving in the bark. Looked like someone took a large hunting knife and carved this odd symbol into it. But this wasn't just any symbol. My grandmother always wore the same pendant round her neck. It was a, like some sort of circle with a star in the middle, golden and shiny. But it was etched right into the tree, almost as if she had left it here for me. I almost broke down in tears seeing it, but I didn't understand how it would even be here. I continued looking around for any sort of clue why it would be here. When I stumbled across a second one, it was different than the first, but clearly in similar font and origin. It was about 20 feet further from the first one. As I got near it, I spied a third one further down and what looked like a fourth even beyond that. I don't know what came over me then, but the curiosity and pain I felt outweighed any sense of apprehension. I should have been much more unnerved by the findings than I was, and looking back, it's clear I made a mistake in that. The last carved tree was at the edge of this sheer cliff which dropped off about 40 feet into a small valley below. It gave a great view of the surrounding scenery, but I didn't have much time to admire it. Alarm bells started ringing in my head. Something just seemed off. I decided to abandon my little adventure and go back to my trail. I didn't want to be in this area any longer. As I began to walk, something then scuttled in the woods to my right. I froze mid-stride but didn't hear or see anything else there. Time seemed to stand still as I stared motionless back at the daunting line of trees. I picked up my pace but suddenly felt a stinging pain in my side. After reaching for it, my hand brushed over a small object jabbing into my ribs. Trickles of blood rolled down my side as I pulled what appeared to be a small dart out from my skin. A sudden surge of fear bellowed through my veins but was almost immediately overcome by a blurred delirium. The world around me began to spin as light and shadow mixed into a nonsensical haze. I was on the ground before I could even process what was really happening to me. Silhouettes then emerged in the distance but before they got near my consciousness faded entirely. I don't know how long I was asleep for, and I don't know who the hell would have done this, but my grandmother was clearly hiding something from me. The sensation of liquid dripping on my forehead awoke me from oblivion. I found my hands and legs were bound tightly by frayed rope and my mouth gagged. I noticed candles covering the walls as my vision further returned, and I found myself in an odd underground structure. Another drip struck my face and I flinched aside. The liquid was sticky and smelled almost metallic which made me realize something horrible. As I averted my gaze upward I felt my heart plummet as my suspicion was confirmed. It wasn't water dripping on me. There dangling from the ceiling by string were dozens of dead animals, small ones mostly. Squirrels, rabbits and birds dangled from yarn on the ceiling. What the hell was this? At that moment I wish I could have just died. That would have been a better outcome than the horrifying things that were about to happen to me. The sound of something crashing echoed from down the corridor. The sounds of footsteps then began approaching and I pressed my back into the wall as my heart began to race. Several forms then emerged from the darkness. Faces of animals stood atop their humanoid forms which were concealed by solid black robes. 
There was a goat, an owl, a serpent, a mantis, and an ox. The faces were masks which appeared carved from wood and painted with splotches of red and white. The mantis withdrew a blade and pressed it against my throat. I stopped my struggle immediately as the others unbound my arms and legs, only for them to rebind them to the plank of wood. It had these shackles anchored on the edge of the board, and they bound me with arms and legs spread open. That's when they removed the gag from my mouth. Please, please don't do this. I, I ceased my groveling as the knife pressed harder against my throat. All I could do then was silently cry as the rabbit and jackal mixed together some sort of liquid in a bowl. They used a mortar and pestle to grind up some substance within it. A few moments later they hovered near me. Please, no! The blade then pressed harder into my gullet and I could feel the skin begin to split. The jackal then prodded me to open my jaw and once I did the rabbit dumped the vile concoction into my mouth. The taste was indescribably wretched, like putrid fish mixed with ground up chalk. The rabbit held my mouth shut and the jackal massaged my neck to sway me to swallow. After fighting the urge to vomit, I finally felt the vile paste descend my throat. After allowing me a few moments to catch my breath, the jackal put the gag back on my mouth, much to my ignored protest. I could feel the grotesque paste working its way through my body. I felt woozy and lethargic as though I'd just been slipped a handful of painkillers. The sense of terror I had seemed to lessen, and although still afraid the calming sensation spread rapidly through my veins, it would have been an almost divine sense of ecstasy as despite the horrendous taste and consistency, the high I began to experience was exquisite. Then it got really weird. I felt a distinct sensation on the lower half of my body, one which only guys can relate to. There's no real way to wrap this in sophistry or colorful language to make it sound any less hilarious and bizarre than it will. So I'll just come out and say it. I felt my thing start getting hard. You know what I mean by that? I had no control over it, but whatever they gave me was clearly the cause of it. The masked congregation then began to chant, which is never a sound you want to hear normally but especially not in my predicament. It sounded like they were speaking Latin, but that could just be how my mind interpreted it. They started moving the board that I was on, wheeling it over to a large crate placed in the corner of the room. The crate shook. My eyes sprung wide as I stared at it while more sound emerged from within. Banging, striking, and low snarling. The group continued to chant as whatever was inside the crate began to grow livelier and more vociferous. The crate door then burst, and a hand reached through the frame. Long pointed fingernails extended from a human arm. I stared horrified as the monstrous thing burst from within the box. The deer, who by then I assumed was their leader, then locked eyes with me, and I heard him declare the name which sent waves of dread to through my very soul. Lilith, go ahead, he's all yours. The thing then emerged from the box and, standing on its haunches and glaring down upon me with an unnatural heat. Its skin was dark gray, and it had the extremely recognizable gold pendant round its neck. Its legs were bent backwards, like that of a hawk's with talons in place of toes, but I recognized it. It was my grandmother, just something was horribly wrong with her. It slid itself into position and mounted itself on top of my waist. The sensation was grotesque, and the sound it made even more so, like a pool of maggots slithering in and out of rancid corpse. It felt like the act alone was tearing my soul into ribbons, but try as I have, there was a horrendous but undeniable sense of pleasure, a sickening lust akin to that of watching a hated enemy's house burn to the ground. You know it's cruel, but you can't effing deny the satisfaction. It was like I wasn't capable of feeling anything else, like I wasn't even a person anymore. I forced myself to forget anything after that. I'm told by the police that I was found a day later on the side of the forest trail. The last thing I remember was, you all right, dude? From a concerned man walking along the trail. I tried convincing him I was okay as some dark black bile erupted from my gut, appearing more like crude oil than anything organic. The man looked both horrified and disgusted. I've tried convincing myself this was some disgusting, demented version of a wet dream but I don't think there's anything I can do to explain away the golden pendant that I found around my neck.